Well, first of all, congratulations to Coach Chronic and his, and his guys. Uh, but I'd also like to congratulate Brad Ruzzo and the men's soccer program. You know, uh, uh, Brad has been here a long time. He's done nothing but win championships. And I think that there's some programs and some sports that get a whole lot more love than men's soccer does, but I'm going to give him some love right now because he took a team that won one. I don't know much about soccer, but they won one conference game this year, and they tied a bunch. He was number five seed, had a bunch of injuries throughout the season. They beat number four, number one, and number three to win the championship. And he's gotten a whole lot of love yesterday. He's going to get a whole lot of love today at 1 o'clock. But I hope that we can build that up, too, and appreciate one of the best coaches that's ever been at Mercer at any sport with, with Ruzzo. You know, it used to be more special, quite honestly, when Coach Landers was the coach, um, the person that, that I played for. It's gotten maybe, I hate to say it, but it's not, it's not about me anymore. It used to be like, even at Austin Peay when we played in Arkansas, or wherever I was, Florida, you know, it was a big deal because the guy that was your mentor or that still is my mentor um, was on the other side. And, and, and trying to do X's and O's versus him at home was like, oh, this is important. But now it's just, honestly, it's just Georgia. You know, it doesn't mean that much to me personally anymore. Um, you know, it's, it's the, uh, you know, one of the most storied programs in the history of women's basketball. You know, there's that. But, 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 but living in the moment is not like it used to be, quite honestly. I know you obviously played them last year, but you, you got to play her team when she was at UCF there in her last year too. What, what do you know about her? Well, actually, actually, we're teammates. We were teammates at Georgia when she was there for two years. She was only there for two years, though. She, she didn't have, a, I have two degrees from Georgia. She, she transferred uh, after two years. But Katie, actually, she cut my hair when I was in college. You know, you know, I have no money. She cut my hair for me, but <laughs> she always brings that up. But, you know, she, she thrives on defense. You know, she has a bunch of defensive players, long, athletic, uh, trying to create havoc, doing the same thing. She brought a bunch of uh, Central Florida players in last year. They transferred from UCF to Georgia. A lot of those guys have graduated, so she's trying to mold um, a new team with, with new players into the same system. But it's going to be a lot of havoc on defense. And, you know, speaking of new players, what, how would you kind of rate, you know, your guys' effort through these first few games and everybody gelling together? Uh, I would say the Western Kentucky game was um, didn't know what to expect. 26 turnovers didn't help the cause. Was very pleased with the Florida Atlantic. I thought we made uh, some corrections in that we only had 10 turnovers. And then we go to Clemson, and, and quite honestly, I mean, it is what it is. We have some really good athletes, and we can get we could run sprints with them. But at the Power Fives are just going to be bigger. You know, I mean, I was a guard. I mean, Brianna's a very good player. She's 5'7", and she's got me guarding her, you know. So the difference, I think, is not the athleticism in, in the mid-majors. I mean, McKenzie's a great player, too. How tall are you? 6'1", six one. Six one, you know, and she's going up against 6'5", post. So it just is what it is. But, you know, uh, yesterday I felt like we had a decent first half. It wasn't great, but it was decent. We're only, only down eight going into halftime, and then the wheels fell off. So I was, I was really disappointed with the way we finished the game yesterday. Given how many different you know options you can throw out there on the floor, I know you, you put Hannah in there, and she knocked down a couple threes later in the game yesterday. Just how, do you, how are you kind of working through all your options that you have right now? You know, still working. I mean, the, the beauty, I mean, I can imagine being a football coach and having, what, 12 games. and having to figure it out that quickly. I mean, we've got like 30. I've got, I've got a long time <laughs> to get this sucker figured out. And that's one reason we play so many different, you know, we played three games and each of them had a different philosophy, right? And so now coming up Thursday, we'll have a totally different philosophy to play against. And so, you know, right now, as I told my players, I said, I'm trying to figure out who I can trust. Like, who can I trust? Like, who can I trust to start the game? Who can I trust in, in time and score situations? Who's going to defend? Who's going to hit the big shot? Not there yet. Not there yet, and, and and I would say a lot of programs in the in the country, women, at least in women's basketball, aren't there yet. If you look at the if you look at the games, this you know this first two weeks. I mean, how many upsets you got going on right there? UConn just lost, you know. I mean, I'm sure Gino's trying to figure it out too. You know, I mean, we're all we're all trying to figure out these new players, and you know, uh, you know. But I'm pleased with my. We started. I mean, I told y'all last time I was here, I, I would not a hundred dollars. Y'all would not guess who I was starting. I bet nobody won that, right? We started five new players that never had suited up for Mercer before in their career, you know? So, uh, you know, it's gonna take a minute, it is. But I love, I love what they bring, I really do.
And if you would mind talking about a little bit about the presence inside from Stacy and, and McKenzie. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, I, I told you all from the get-go, man, we've been guard dominated since I've been here. And I told you all, I said, I'm really, really, really excited about our post play. And I think any of you all that have seen us play could see why. You know, McKenzie is playing like a beast. Stacy, I mean, she's just been shot out of a cannon, just doing amazing things. But those two guys together, pretty, pretty good, you know. And so I'm, I'm begging my guards. I said, I'll, get, I'll need to feed the post, man. I mean, I told them at halftime. Stacy was three for three. You know, they, they're they shooting the ball great, but we're not getting them a ball the, the ball enough. So that's our goal is to get the ball inside a little bit more what we're doing. And if they can't get it, go get the rebound, man, you know. <laughs> Coach, it's early in the season, but have you kind of figured out an identity for this team, or is it kind of building to a point where you see how the style is going to be and what the identity is really going to be of this team going forward? Well, I, I felt like we had that figured out this summer, but it hasn't come to fruition. I mean, we talked about it all summer. I mean, we were going to be, you know, a defensive identity. Now, you know, we've had moments of that, but we have not been consistent at all with that. So. You know, do I need to revisit that? I don't know yet. I'm not going to like throw in the towel quite yet. I'm still trying to figure out that. That's and that's a, not the first person that's asked me that question. But I think with three games under our belt and the types of you know teams that we played, it's going to take probably until maybe mid December. You know, quite honestly, to to figure that out for sure because. You know, we, we're still juggling our, you know, our lineup and which posts play well together. You know, who, you know, who's going to guard the best player? All that. So today, I would say defense. I mean, I'm not going to tell you why I say defense, but I, but today that would be my my answer. But at the same time, I think our post game could be a huge part of our our identity as well. The last few years, you've had a similar core, but now this year, like you're saying, a lot of things are having to be figured out for you personally. How have you had to adjust to that and kind of change the way you might coach or go into a season with all the new news this year? Yeah, you know, I joked the other day that I, I draw up the jump ball where they stand for the jump ball, and that's about all I got. Because after that, I don't know what's going to happen because I'm so used to having, okay, we're going to run these, kind of like football, I guess they do. We're going to run these plays to start with to see how they're defending ball screens, how they're going to defend the, like I throw a lot of different plays out there and get some things figured out early. And then I have kind of my substitution pattern figured out in my mind. I don't have that stuff yet. So, you know, and like I said, it, and I'm not saying I don't trust anybody. It's just like, who do you trust in that moment? And we're still figuring out, like, I got to figure out, okay, who do I want to shoot the free throw if they're fouling at the end of the game? You know, just little things that people don't always think about. You know, who do we want on the free throw line when they're shooting and we need to pinch and get the defensive rebound? There's so much that goes into it that you just have, sometimes you have to learn these things by trial, by, you try to simulate things in practice. And then something happens in a game, you're like, well, flip. I thought I didn't think of that one. You know, or, you, or I did, but you can't simulate that in practice type thing. So that's why basketball is just, thankfully, a long, a long year. Has anyone surprised you when you're doing all these different rotations, putting everyone in? Has anyone surprised you and kind of stepped up, stepped up to the jump? I would say that uh, the first person that stands out would be Stacy Jones. Uh, and we know she's a very gifted uh, athlete. She's been outstanding in, in preseason practice and so forth. But the way she just has been dominating the glass and doing things that uh, like that has just been, you know, amazing. I mean, she from the get go. I mean, I, I'm not talking about McKenzie just because she's here, but you know, I think. I mean, she may talk about this. You know, she came from Division Two, and her probably the big question mark on top of her head was, "Can't do I fit in in Division One?" I, I would imagine, and absolutely unequivocally. You know, she she is a dog, and she she comes every day, and she's a leader, and she every single drill she goes as hard as she can, and she's a blessing blessing to coach. So uh, I say my post my post game is probably the the most positive right now that I'm excited about. Thanks, y'all. I would say the biggest adjustment is for me. You got you have other teammates that can do what you can do. So coming from the Division One, I, I mean Division Two level, you know, I was doing a lot of things uh, by myself. But now you have Stacy. Uh, we played four at one end. I was the I was the low post. But now when playing three and two, where you got me and Stacy down low, or me or Ashley, it's like it's really nice when you got your teammate having 15 rebounds a game, and you don't really have to worry too much about that. And just being at the same level as everybody else is really really nice, and it's easy to play with. 
how do you guys kind of go on go go against each other and practice a little bit? You and Stacy, what is that relationship like right now? Oh, we love going against each other. We get each other better every day. I know in the summertime, me and her had some individual workouts with Coach Gardner, and even during the summer, we talked about how like excited we are to play against one another. And we joke in the locker room all the time. We're like, we're so glad Stacy's on our team. We're so glad Stacy's on our team because having and even Ashley too, like having to play against them. It's not easy whatsoever. Going against them in practice all the time is not easy, but that's what you want. You don't want something that's easy in practice, so you are prepared when we do play Clemson or UGA. Like, it's so nice when you can have someone that pushes you every day and wants to push you, and you want to push them too, so it helps a lot. Do you see the post really being a strength for this team before? Yeah, 100%. And I will say, as a post player, when you have your coach come up here and telling your guards to give you the ball, <laughs> it makes it, it's, a, it's a really, really nice to hear. And I, you know, I don't think a lot of post players get that luxury um, at, every team, at every school. So when you have a, post, a, a coach telling your guards, give them the ball, it makes you want to play even harder too. And like, okay, well, if they're going to give it to me, I better score, so. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, you know, Coach Gardner likes to schedule the top. With these, these power five opponents, you mentioned the height and the, the differences there. How, how, how better prepared is that going to make you guys when you get to so Oh, so much better. We were talking about that in the locker room after our loss uh, yesterday. And, you know, Ashley said, uh, stepped up and said, guys, we have to remember, like, these are why we schedule these games. We're playing S ACC schools, SEC schools. Like, what, whatever we do now is just only going to make us better for what when we play, when we get to the SOCON. So, it, yeah, the loss does suck, but we know that it's only making us better. State Division One is always the dream, right? When you're a young kid, you've accomplished that, but now you're going to play these Clemson's, UGA's. Has it been surreal for you? And when you kind of look back at your journey, how does it feel to have the opportunity to do this? It's amazing. I I call my mom before every game, and you know, she she's a little bit more dramatic than I am. You know, she's like, I'm just tearing up thinking about you being able to play at this level. And so, you know, sometimes I do get caught up walking into the Clemson Arena, and you you walk in there and like coming from. A division two where we had to share the gym with everybody it's a community gym as well like you don't have those things and so I think I'm very appreciative of it now because not having that and then your fifth year of college it's like you've worked so hard for this so now you have it it's so nice like I'm so grateful for what I get to do here and the places that coach Garner takes us you've been under coach Garner for a little bit now who's had a lot of success here how has her coaching style kind of maybe affected you this year or made you better in a way already early into the season? I think um, a lot of times when you when you search up women's Mercer women's basketball, like you have you know who Coach Gardner is. And so her coaching style is when I first got here, it was a little adjustment, but like that's what I want. Like I wanted someone that was gonna push me until like that I didn't even think I could be pushed. So with that, like it makes me a better player and I think I'm so much of a better player than I was two months ago. So like every day coming in, like the passion she has for the game makes you only want to work harder for her. Thank you. Thank you.